Britain's first dedicated anti-tank weapon was a rifle grenade. The number 44 rifle grenade was developed towards the end of the First World War to take on the emerging threat of German tanks. The number 44 could be fired from a short magazine Lee Enfield Mark III, and the British had developed a plethora of rod and cup discharger based rifle grenades, but the number 44 was the first specifically designed with tanks in mind. By 1918, the German army had responded to the threat of British and French tanks by developing their own, the A7V, albeit in small numbers, and by fielding captured Allied tanks as well. The A7V, seen here being examined by the French army, was a Leviathan, at over 3.3 metres tall and weighing in at more than 30 tonnes. It would be crewed by at least 18 men. This German newsreel footage shows a German crew getting to grips with a captured British Mark IV female machine gun armed tank. With the emergence of the A7V and a number of instances of captured tanks being used against them, it was decided that the infantrymen needed an effective means of taking on tanks. Sources suggest that the grenades were developed by the Royal Engineers Experimental Station with input from the tank corps. The number 44 was largely based on the alien number 24 rifle grenade. The British Army had been using rifle grenades with rods since February 1915, with the introduction of the number 2 rifle grenade. A myriad of grenade designs had been developed during the war, with dozens of designs entering service between 1915 and 1918. Eventually, the British Army moved away from using rodded rifle grenades because of the implications of barrel wear from the friction of the rods, and focused on discharger cup based designs. The number 44's spiritual descendant the number 68 anti-tank rifle grenade, introduced in 1940, would follow this trend and be fired from the same discharger cup used to fire the number 36 when fitted with a gas check. The number 44 grenade itself is made up of a pair of pressed tin plate pieces which make up the top and bottom of the bomb, with a rolled sheet of tin making up the central body. The parts were soldered together with a filling plug also soldered into the top of the grenade. The grenade itself contained either Amatol 8020 or Amatol 8317, with sources suggesting that 11.5 ounces of the explosive was enclosed in the grenade's body. While externally it may resemble later shape charge weapons, it wasn't. The explosive simply filled the space around the central detonator assembly. The ignition system was essentially a .297-230 cartridge case and a detonator. On firing, a release socket moved to allow the retaining bolts to release the striker. The striker was then simply held back from the detonator by a spring. When the grenade struck its target, this caused the striker to overcome the spring, compressing it and allowing the striker to ignite the detonator and set off the grenade's main filling. Given the mass of the bomb and the type of detonator used, the number 44 was probably intended for use at short ranges. To use the grenade, the firer would remove the wire fastening around the grenade to free the canvas vein. This would also allow access to the safety pin. The top plug could be undone and the detonator inserted. The rod was then slid down the muzzle of the rifle and the safety pin could then be removed. A blank cartridge would be loaded into the rifle and when the trigger was pulled, the grenade was launched by the gases from the cartridge, pushing the rod out of the barrel. This clip shows how a standard rod grenade would be loaded into a rifle with a blank cartridge loaded into the breech. The number 44's flight would be stabilised by the canvas skirt or vane. There was no mention of the grenades in the British Army's small arms committee minutes, so its development must have been documented elsewhere. It does however appear in the list of changes and is known to have been issued from April 1918 onwards but further primary research is needed to find out more about its development, its designers and its testing. The number 44 remained in service into the interwar period, but does not appear in any of the post-war small arms training manuals. Several were published during this period, with the first in 1924 and a second in 1931. The number 44 appears in neither of them. The final pre-war small arms training pamphlet on grenades, published in 1937, is confined to just the number 36 grenade. According to Ian Skeneton's book on British grenades, there were no number 4s remaining in stores by April 1931, and it was declared obsolete. Sources disagree on the number of number 44s manufactured, 
with some suggesting just under 100,000, while others suggest up to 125,000 or possibly even 150,000. According to Skeneton, 9,800 were issued between April and November 1918, a very small amount compared to the hundreds of thousands of other more widely used grenades held in stores at the end of the war. The German A7V tanks were first deployed in March 1918, but only saw their first action the following month. The A7V's armour varied from 5 to 30 mm of steel plate, depending on the location on the tank. The steel plate was not hardened, which may have increased the number 44's effectiveness against it. There were, however, also instances of captured Allied tanks being turned against them, albeit in small numbers. It may be that with the number 44 in its relatively small charge, it would have had to have been fired at fairly close range and have struck a vulnerable point on the attacking vehicle for it to be effective. Sadly, there are no readily available records of the number 44's use or its effectiveness. While the number 44 wasn't the only anti-tank grenade developed during the period, the French also developed several rifle grenades, and certainly not as well known as the German Tigerwehr. The number 44 does represent Britain's first dedicated infantry anti-tank weapon. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you found this interesting. Don't forget to leave us a comment, a like, share the video with friends, and if you enjoy them, please do consider supporting us via Patreon. You can get access to videos early, and you can also pick up some thank you perks, including stickers, postcards, and a copy of the Tab Advanced Combat Rifle coloring book. Thanks again for watching, catch you next time.